Hi, Nancy News here. We're uh, here covering this breaking story at Workshop Studios. And uh, here to help us is Handyman Hank and his assistant, Mr. Bearhead. Let's hear him talk about this this ongoing crisis. Uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Nancy. Um, Handyman Hank here and my partner over there, Mr. Bearhead. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So, uh, Nancy, if you'll zoom in here, I'll show you what the problem is. Yeah, yeah up a little higher. There you go. Let's focus on that. Right here, we're looking at the water pressure in our house here at Workshop Studio. And it is at 115 pounds per square inch. Can you see that little dial right there? That's what that is, 115 or 110, a little over that. That is way too high for the house. It really should be down here at about 70 to 75 over here. So what we want to do is we want to get that pressure down. But how do we do that? What do you think, Mr. Bearhead? <coughs> yep, I agree. We're going to have to check out something called the water pressure valve or the water pressure regulator. So let's go have a look at that. Okay, Hank, our news crew is standing by on site where that thing is that you just talked about. Let's go have a look. So here's the, the valve, so let's talk about that. What do you think's going on? <coughs> oh, you think the valve is broken and we need to replace it? <coughs> oh, so how does it work? Well, Nancy, it goes like this. The water comes in here. And this valve, you can see up at the top, there's a, a, a nut up there, or a bolt actually. And it adjusts a, a mechanism in here that only allows a certain amount of pressure into the house. So this is where the rest of the water for the house comes in. So normally, we would just adjust that bolt up there, and it would get the pressure right. But that's not working anymore. So we have to replace this with one of these. And you can see that's a pretty good match there. Let's see if I can get that in there. Hang on a second. Okay, so you can see better now. It's a pretty good match. It's the right length, that's what you want. Right length, and it's got this special attachment on this side over here called a coupling. And this side will screw into the pipe. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And what's next, Mr. Bearhead? <laughs> oh yeah, we gotta turn the water off. So we're gonna turn it off to out here at the water meter. And we have a tool to do that. It's got a little hook in the end there. Goes down on that, that little raised area. And then we turn it so that it's perpendicular to the pipe. There's the pipe right there. And then open a faucet to drain the water out. And that should get all the water out of the system. So it's kind of a tight squeeze in here, so I'm not sure I can get a picture of me getting all this out of here, but I'll show you kind of if I step by step, how's that? All right, so first thing is I loosened this nut on the union. So it's finger tight now. There's gonna be a little water that comes out probably, but it should be fairly minimal. Ooh, a little more than I thought. I'll get a bucket under that. All right, bucket under there. So next is to unscrew it from here and should be able to do it with this wrench and another crescent. Um, one of the little tricks here is you never want to turn without having an opposing wrench on the other side. I have both hands to do this, but I'll put a wrench here and here and turn against them. All right, so now you see that it's, it's rotated down. Now I can turn it by hand. It just took a little bit more effort to get that side off. Let's see if I can do this without dropping it here. It's just a little longer than that pipe, so I'm gonna keep kind of getting it out of the way here. Now I was reading, I'll talk to you about this as I'm doing this. Oops. I was reading that these valves actually can be serviced. They have a uh, they have a uh, a strainer in them to keep the bits from clogging up the valve, I guess. And uh, 
if that strainer gets full, then the valve acts very much like what, what we were experiencing here. There it is out. All right, so I took a little time to clean off these threads. You probably saw they were grubby. And then I put um, the Teflon tape on there. And be sure to put this on first or you'll never get it on there because it won't come off now. It goes up against that, that flange there, so you gotta put that on first. So now what I'll do is just tighten this down. I'll do finger tight first and then I'll use a wrench on that. And I'll put tape on this side too so that we're ready to put everything together. There it is all installed. Teflon tape there, there, and there. Joints have been cleaned off. <clears throat> and I've got this valve off now as well. This this will turn off all the house water. It won't turn off the uh, outside water, but it turns off the house water. So I'm going to leave that off. Go turn on the street. And then we'll turn this on just to make sure nothing catastrophic happens. All right, so let's turn this valve on here. See what happens. It's all right. We want that flow. Because now the... Various things will fill up and faucets will start to work. Yep, that's the faucet over there. Okay. Let's uh, let everything get to pressure. Okay, good. I'm not seeing anything. It all looks good and dry. Usually I have to let it sit for a bit to make sure there's no drips on it. But no, nothing so far. Well, it's been several days, and there's no leaks from any of the pipes. So, I think that's the job is done. And the maximum pressure has been under 80 pounds per square inch. Oh, I think that's great. Well, thanks to the quick thinking of Handyman Hank and his sidekick, Mr. Bearhead, the crisis has been averted. Thanks for watching Workshop News. And stay tuned for more fun things. In fact, there are two technical notes if you want to keep watching. They're kind of interesting. All right, this is Nancy News saying goodbye and keep watching and like and subscribe. Just a technical note for those that are interested. <clears throat> this is a water pressure gauge you can buy from Home Depot or Lowe's near 10 bucks or something and you hook it onto your water heater that's usually the best spot because that represents the pressure in the house if you hook it onto a outside hose it's got um, the threads for hooking onto where you hook a hose onto right here so this hooks onto where a hose would hook onto but if you hook it outside your water system may not be quite the same outside as it is inside in our house we have higher pressure to supply the water the outside water supply and the sprinklers whereas the inside house should be much lower and the reason that this wants to be down here oops the reason that you want it down to in the 70 kind of 70 to 75 range is because that pressure will start if it gets too high will start to damage things like water heaters and just pipes in general will not do well with it um, and uh, It'll start to harm other equipment like dishwashers and uh, washing machines. So it's important to keep that pressure down. It also can develop uh, leaks, which is partly what uh, alerted us about this. But it was also that the pressure in some of our uh, various things like showers and faucets were uh, becoming higher and higher. Now, the other thing I'll say is that the water pressure will um, vary if you're like if you're using the water, this will drop down. I'll give you an example here. I'll go turn the faucet on and show you what it does. Okay, that's with a faucet running. You can see that it's actually down about 50. It's not supposed to do that. A good water pressure regulator will stay fairly constant when you have the various um, uh, things running water, faucets or uh, washing machines. So that's another indicator that the pressure uh, control valve, pressure water pressure control valve is not doing well. The other thing about this knob is there's a little red, that red dial on there, and that's meant to follow this little dial down, uh, up, and it indicates the highest, whoops, I just moved it there, 
the highest that it's reached because if we're using the water then this will move around a bit but what I want to do is know what the peak pressure has been in this case that's way too high so what I can do if I want to see what it's going to do now is just rotate this down and oops put it right against there it's very sensitive and when I turn the water off I'll show you what starts to happen so there's the faucet off and it might be obvious that it's creeping up I don't know if you can see it's nearly at 70 it's pretty slow but it'll keep moving up like that over the next half hour or so until it goes well over 100 so uh, one way to know if your pro water pressure regulator is working correctly is you buy one of these valves you put it onto this place in the water heater this is normally a place where you drain the water out you put it on there and then you just watch it for a day or two and see what happens keep um, resetting that little red red uh, indicator dial and it'll tell you what the peak pressure has been reaching in the house uh, again you try not to go over 75 let's say the the range according to I think it's the building code don't quote me on this but I think it is between 50 and 80 psi so 80 would probably be the max you'd want to go and 75 gives you good solid water pressure but below the max which I think most people are 70 to 75 so that's just a little side note that if you want to check you can do it fairly quickly and easily uh, in uh, I'll put a link to uh, um, another YouTube uh, video that uh, has been made about this that does a really good job of explaining it as well all right so there you go a little technical note All right, so here it's easier to see on the bench. New one, this is the old one, and this is what we call the union because you can unscrew this. It's not actually soldered in, and it's got pipe threads on either side, but it means you can unscrew it and slip this in and out of the pipe as you saw what we did. So, first of all, this gasket is completely shot. As you can see, I'll show you what the new one looks like so you know what the <laughs> what good is. There's the new washer. There's the old one. That just happens over time. Um, it got crudded up inside. You can see all that crud in there. Yeah, there we go, like that. And so now we have a nice clean one going in. No crud. <clears throat> and then, apparently these can be serviced. And I'll, I'll do this after I get it in the other one installed, but I'll take this old one apart. There's a basket inside, apparently, that will collect all the sediment and it will affect how well the valve works. But let's go ahead and get this new one installed. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you, hang on here, was this size really matters this way. And, although this is sticking out a little farther, I don't have this screwed in as far. That is a pretty close fit, so I think we can make that work. You can see that this one is looks just a little longer than this one, because this, this fitting is a little longer than that fitting but I'm hoping that it'll slip right in there, but we'll find out. So that's what you want to measure if you're going to be doing this, is that distance from there to there. And then you want to make sure you have the right thread si or pipe size, which is three quarter on my old one here on both sides, threaded on both sides. And this one is three quarter threaded on both sides. So we'll see if we can get this installed. I'm hoping that it'll fit. Um, if not, we're <laughs> gonna have to do something else. Last thing, this is the adjustment nut, uh, bolt, if you might. Um, you, you loosen this one, this is just a jam nut down against there, but you loosen that, and then this one, as it goes out, it's supposed to get higher, and when it goes in, it gets lower, if I remember right. I'll correct myself if that's wrong. With so you, you adjust it by moving this in and out. You can see where this one was set. Uh, the attempt was to get the pressure to drop, and it just wouldn't. So I had it screwed way in. This one's, um, according to what I've read, this is set at 55 PSI or 50 PSI. I've forgotten which, but we'll find out after we get it installed. All right, here's the old one. And I thought we'd have um, a little bit of a moment here and take it apart and see how this thing works. So it does say that this is serviceable. We'll see, though. I've already loosened this up, so didn't bore you with that. 
It wasn't super tight. Okay, here we go. Oh, just a big spring in there, pushing down on the diaphragm. And you can see that goes up and down in there when you turn this up and down. It pushes on the spring, which pushes on the diaphragm. Okay. <laughs> I guess we've got to take that off of there. Okay, so there we go. Okay. And I'm assuming that we pry that off. We'll give it a tap. There we go. Tippity tap. And off this comes. And that's all there is to it. So my suspicion is this rubber was had lost its integrity. You can see how it's bowed out there. So it probably was not providing that much needed pressure relief. So there's still a valve down in there. I don't know if you can see that. There's a valve that's kind of pushing down inside. Let's see if we can get to that. Well, with some perseverance, we have it coming out of there now. And there's the little screen to clean out. And there's the plunger that goes up and down to control the pressure. And the screen comes out of here. I guess this is the screen you clean. And there's water access in there. Looks all right. This shaft is kind of um, stiff, so I'm not sure if that was it or if it was that rubber in there. But uh, yeah, there you go. So the screen doesn't look too dirty. I thought maybe it would be all filled up. Who knows, with a little servicing this might have worked, but I didn't really want to take a chance. It was about $70 at Home Depot, the new one. And at this point, you kind of really want to just replace it. Let's take this off of here and see what, what that does. All right. Again, I've already loosened it, so I don't want to bore you with all these struggles that... All right, so... I have cleaned it up on the wire wheel. You can see it's all nice and shiny. Amazing how brass responds to a little bit of cleaning up. <clears throat> but it also uncovered a number of, of different um, seal points. There's a, there's a rubber gasket here. And obviously this one we talked about earlier, this one here. And there's one down inside here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. And it seals off so that you don't get water coming past that point. So I wouldn't I wouldn't actually try to rebuild this because it's got way too many rubber seals on it that you'll never find. So the water comes in here. You can see the arrow. Water comes in here, goes up. I don't know if let me see if I can get something up in there so you can see. Comes up into there. <clears throat> Has to make it past this gasket here, the seal that this is supposed to make. Down there, I guess. Oh, I see. No, it comes it comes into there and through into these holes, and then down through where this shaft goes. Okay, that's it. This one goes on top, I think. No, this one goes on the bottom. There we go. This goes like... Well, <laughs> don't remember how I put it together. I think it actually goes like this, and then the other... This part goes on the bottom. So I brought over some... Uh, silicone grease just to try it out and see if it does make a difference makes it slide up and down more quickly so this is great stuff it's plumbing you use this in plumbing all the time to give a good yeah see that's nice that slides much better oh yeah <clears throat> so i'd say that was one of the problems is and there's another seal here at the bottom of this one that goes up and, and seals against this area so let's see if we can kind of put it back together and see what the 
we can see that little that little washer there needs to be replaced. That looks more like a faucet washer, but you can see, hopefully you can see that it's all beat up, and so that probably wasn't doing well either. So it goes together. Something seems to have gotten damaged. Hang on a second. All right, so put that back together again. See if I can get that screwed in there. That part went flying when I was doing the uh, wire wheel, and I think it dinged up that end just slightly. There we go. And then that goes on there. Okay, and that's our that's our restored part. If you might remember, this is the part that goes on the top that goes up and down with the diaphragm. So it slides up and down. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's nice and easy right now. Whereas before, it was like, couldn't barely move it. So I'd say that's part of the problem. But it also isn't sealing well here. It was just time to be replaced. Anyhow, that appears to be how it works, is that this then goes in. So the water comes in into this through these holes here down and out through this outlet here <clears throat> and it looks like it sort of meters it by going up and down depending on the pressure so it is like like more of a gating system like it lets a little bit of water out and then in out in out in and so you're getting this pressure um, maintenance by by continuing to open and close this valve, and so it really does need to move very smoothly. <clears throat> At least that's the way it appears to me, because this is, this is, let's do this again here so you can see it. This is hooked to the top, again like this. I won't put it in the valve body, that's this bit over here. I won't put it in, in this valve body, because you can't see what's happening. So this is air on top, this is where that big bell went. Look at that. This is where the big bell went up here. This is air on top, and this spring pushes down here. So it tries to keep <clears throat> the spring is in essence pushing this open. And the pressure of the water, because it's in here. Oops, gotta get this in the picture. The water is pushing on this, so it wants the push pressure pushes it up. Comes in, and you adjust the spring so that it's it's only letting out, it's only allowing the pressure, the amount of water through this little gating system that you want. So this really does have to move very, very well. <clears throat> and also, if this is leaking, I suspect that's the other problem, is that this washer down here was leaking, and that's why it kept creeping up probably to street level um, PSI. So that needs to seal completely like that, and it didn't. So that was where our problem was, is it was, um, first of all, it was kind of jammed and wasn't going up and down smoothly. And secondly, this seal down here was wiped out. And it might be that this could be replaced and the rest of it would work appropriately. But again, I don't think it's worth it. A lot, not for a 28-year-old a um, valve like this. It's just too many seals and things on it that I would not trust. Anyhow, that seems to be how that works. Water comes into this area where this is and through these holes so the water wants to push up on this diaphragm which is sealed around this edge because it's sealed in the valve body pushes up and shuts off the flow so if we didn't have any spring the water would just shut off and you wouldn't get anything through the spring pushes this down and the more you push down on the spring the more it opens that and and the water has to fight it basically to get in there. So if we have 120 PSI that's pushing on this and we push down with 40, if you want to say PSI, <clears throat> then the result would be 80 PSI that would form on the outside here because it would just keep going back and forth depending on how much pressure is being put there. So that seems to be how that works. Pretty simple. Couple of, it's really just a simple valve, and it's it's gating the the pressure by going back and forth. That's my best guess. I'll put a link down below, um, down below here, 
uh, in the um, other section to any videos I find on how these things work, but I suspect that's what it is. All right. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Oh, uh, sorry. P.S. One last thing I'd note is that getting this apart while it was sitting out here on the bench was hard enough. But if I tried to get this apart while it was up there um, still attached before I had taken it all the way out, that would have been near impossible. So I suspect what their intent is that you service this thing um, more regularly, which of course I'm not going to do. You service it more regularly um, so that this will come apart and you put you know silicone grease on everything so that you can take that this cap off of it easy because you put silicone grease in here uh, in these threads here and this would come off more easily this would then slide out more easily as a unit like that it didn't before i had to <laughs> almost basically force it out of there so remember that to go back together i would have to take this bell house off this this bell house off in while it's up in the pipe in the ceiling take this out which was screwed down in there and it took all my force to get it out i didn't think i would so i had to get this out of here And then I had to get this all apart, and that was a challenge too. So, anyhow, just a PS is that trying to service these things after 28 years, probably difficult. All right, again, thanks for watching. Bye.